So for today's adventure, I want to take the Jeep. Yes, I know I said I wouldn't, but I want to take the Jeep over the Schaefer Trail. I've done a lot of research and I think we can do it. But, yeah, the Jeep's bleeding. I got a leak on one of the hoses, so I'm gonna bring it to a shop here in town. Luckily, there's a million of them. <laughs> so hopefully they can fix it and I'll have time to, to run that trail and make a video because it looks amazing. And today is my last day here in Moab, so I want to take advantage of it. Today we're gonna to do something that goes against every bone in my body and we're gonna take the Jeep on Schaefer Trail. <laughs> uh, I've talked to a lot of people in Moab and they say that's what the Jeep was built for. So let's put it to the test. To start Schaefer Trail, uh, you gotta take out of Moab heading north, 191, and then Potash Road until it turns into a dirt road. It's about 16 miles or so. Uh, the trail itself is about 19 miles long and you climb, there's an elevation gain of 3,000 feet for what my apps tell me. Uh, earlier today, I had a little hiccup with the Jeep. It was leaking transmission fluid. It was a, a one, two hour fix and now we're ready to go. So before you set off anywhere around here, there's no cell phone service. Just make sure your vehicles are, <laughs> are in good condition because you don't want to get stuck up there in the, in the trail. The road is a little bit bumpy, or a lot of it bumpy. Uh, I don't know that you need a four-wheel drive this time of year, but in spots I think it will be helpful. <laughs> As you're driving down and at the beginning of the trail, you'll notice a big view. Let me turn around here and show you. And that is Dead Horse Point State Park. I made a video about that, so if you haven't seen it yet, I'll put the link right here and I'll put it at the end of the video as well. Uh, this red rock country is beautiful. I'm gonna take a couple pictures of the Jeep here because I think it looks awesome on the red rock. So far it's been a beautiful ride, but it is a little bumpy. I haven't seen a need for a four wheel drive yet. I've already seen a few cars coming this way, which is good because the last thing I want to do is meet someone up on the switchbacks towards the end of the trail. <laughs> That's kind of why I started at noon is hopefully by the time I'm done making the video and taking my time, It'll be about a four hour ride and that should be getting close to the end of the day uh, towards the end of the trail, which should look amazing also. Look at that balanced rock. How is it there? I don't know. There's some crazy stuff happening here in Moab. This is, uh, I think that defies every law of physics, but I'm not a physicist. So. There's some muddy sections that look very sticky, so I'm sure if you came here after it rained or while it was raining, you probably would need a, a, a good four-wheel drive vehicle, but right now when it's dry, it's, as far as I can tell, it's just really bumpy. But it's really cool to see Dead Horse from this perspective.
this behind me is uh, pot ash something. It's a big mining thing here in Moab. They got this and they have uranium and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I don't know what it's used for. I'll do some research and I'll maybe I'll write it here somewhere. But it looks pretty cool to see the the pools with the LaSalle Mountains in the background. Dude. It, uh, that's private property. The road here goes through and eventually we'll climb up to Canyonlands. All right, the first mile or two were fine, but now these bumps are getting ridiculous. <laughs> this Jeep is a, it's a 2003 Jeep Rubicon and it's not as smooth as some of the new ones uh, are. And the bumps are just really irritating and we have like 15 more miles of this. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I said yes to this trip. The ride is still very bumpy. <laughs> it got a little bit better, but not really. What got much better is the scenery, the landscape. This is amazing. You drive right by these big red rock canyons or through the canyon and the landscape just got unbelievably beautiful. I, I know what's coming ahead because I had the drone up there and it, it just looks spectacular. The one thing I have to say though, uh, there's a lot of places in Moab that rent Jeeps. I know this Jeep can handle it. it. It's more than capable. And there's lots of things that I'm capable of doing, but just because you can, doesn't mean you should. And on second thought, I would have much rather abused somebody else's Jeep than this one. I feel bad for Jeep. <coughs> if you have the windows open like I do, beware there's a lot of dust, but it still doesn't take away from the magnificent view. I mean, look at some of these rocks, they're just, and to be here in this canyon, looking at all this, I know it's a very popular trail. I know there's a lot of people that come ex explore it and experience it. But at the same time, there's a lot of people with more sense that will not bring their vehicles in here. <laughs> so I know this is pretty unique in a way. There's a, an interesting viewpoint right here uh, along the trail and that's the Thelma and Louise point. So if you ever seen a movie, uh, this is where they jumped off to a happy life. I got phone service here. I've been out the whole way, but here there's phone service and it says I got 11 more miles. So let's go. More drone footage we're entering Canyonlands National Park and it's a federal offense to fly a drone here so I'm not gonna take a chance especially putting it on YouTube but the last few miles of this trail have been amazing and now that we're in the park I can't even imagine what we're gonna see this is what the road splits so Schaefer Trail goes that way and the White Rim Road goes that way White Rim Road it's a 70 something mile overnight trip that we're not gonna do today but the, wine, the uh, Schaefer Trail goes this way and then it goes right back up to Canyonlands National Park.
I'm not getting much closer because my knees are shaky. But you get a really cool view of the trail. That is incredible. But here's the road. And I think it kind of disappears over here. So we got to keep going that way until we get behind that butte. And then I think it goes over. This is crazy. And it looks like we made it. What an amazing day. The road is horrible, <laughs> but the experience is amazing. To be able to drive this canyon on the edge, literally living on the edge, having other people meeting other cars, not knowing where to go. <laughs> it's a little nerve wracking at times, but it's not, it's not that bad. I highly recommend the experience. If you ever get a chance to come do this, do it, don't hesitate. I recommend renting a vehicle instead of bringing your own. It, there's a lot of really bad bumps that could damage things, like the hose I replaced earlier. The views are incredible, the landscapes, the experience is phenomenal. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please. Uh, click that like button and we'll see you next week. Bye. In next week's video, Bambi takes a nap. I rent some toys and have an incredible adventure.